What is going on YouTube? It's AirJP back with a brand new review video. We are going to be taking a look, as you can tell from the title, at the LeBron 17 Future Airs here in just a few minutes. Um, but I want to go over the, something with you guys here first. So I have been writing written performance reviews for Sneakers Detroit website this year. Been having a whole lot of fun with that. Um, I just wanted your guys' opinion or feedback, what you thought about me making performance review videos on the basketball sneakers that I obviously write the performance reviews on as well. Just want to know your guys' thoughts and opinions. Um, I did used to do performance review videos on basketball sneakers, and I haven't done one in quite some time because I've strictly just been writing the performance reviews instead. And I'm definitely not going to quit writing the performance reviews because I do have a lot of fun doing that. It's an easier, easy way to get your thoughts out and all your thoughts out on how the shoe actually performed. But basically what I was thinking about doing was taking my written reviews and kind of summarizing it into a video form. So just let me know, as I said, in the comment section below what you guys think about that overall. And if you haven't checked out any of my other videos, definitely do so. Smash that subscribe button, hit that like button, and definitely hit that notification bell. So you know every single time that I do upload a video. If you didn't check out yesterday's video, we obviously uploaded a video on or unboxing and review of the Jordan 34. So that's a very cool sneaker. I'm glad to have them in hand. Just to give you guys a little bit of information, what I'll be writing on here uh, upcoming or most recently here is I will be doing a performance review, which I'm currently already testing the KD-12. I will be doing these LeBron 17s <coughs> as well as writing reviews on the Jordan 34s. So that is something to definitely look forward to. And obviously I can make videos on all of those sneakers if you guys want me to. But with all that being said, guys, let's go ahead and check out these LeBron 17s. Obviously that's what you're really here to see. So we'll take a look at the box first. You've got a standard black box on the top. You've got LeBron 17 in gold. And behind the actual lettering, the uh, line is back there. I don't know if the camera is going to allow me or allow you to see that or pick it up or not. Um, on the back, you can see the Nike uh, swoosh logo or branding there. We'll go ahead and take a look at the color code, sizing, all that. LeBron 17 LMTD, white tech, gray Kassar purple, size 11 and a half, and retail on these was $200. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual shoe. Here they are, guys. LeBron 17 in that Future Air colorway. Let me go ahead and grab this other one out. Move the box out of the way. And we'll go ahead and talk about them just a little bit. So one, I mean, there's tons of differences, obviously, from the LeBron 16. But at the same time, one big difference, I would say, other than the air unit is, um, or how big the air unit is, is the actual materials used on the upper. This is Nike's new material, which is knit posit. They use battle knit on the 15 and 16, and they went with this knit posit material instead. I think so far, after just feeling it and seeing it in hand, it's not totally different um, from the actual battle knit. I mean, you obviously have a different texture, different uh, look to the material, but it still feels pretty soft. I think that it's going to hold up well and be very, very durable. The 15s and 16s were definitely very durable for me, and I enjoyed playing in both shoes, um, and I just really liked the materials overall. So I hope that these at least live up to the battle knit material. So next, I want to talk to you guys about basically my Favorite part of this actual colorway and probably my least favorite part performance wise on this shoe and that is the tongue. Now the look of the tongue is awesome. You've got that line and tons of very detailed uh, look on the actual tongue when it hits a lot in different directions. It obviously changes a little bit and looks really cool. But performance wise or lacing the shoe, it's going to be a little bit difficult. Um, the laces are basically behind the tongue, which makes it really hard to loosen the shoe. And I've heard it's really, really difficult to actually put these on due to the tongue being the way that it is. And then obviously when you lace them up or tighten them, you're going to be tying it in front of that tongue and trying to just mess with your laces all the time. Underneath that tongue, I feel like it's going to be a pain or a little bit difficult. But at the same time, I really like how it looks. I feel like that this colorway, um, I will say this, the ashes in the Lake Show colorway do not feature a tongue like this. So if you're wanting them strictly for performance, that's probably the better colorways or pairs to go with if you want the coolest looking colorway so far in my opinion other i really like that lake show colorway i'm not going to lie but uh this is definitely the coolest colorway to me that has been uh shown or said to be released thus far um and i thought to myself um i don't foresee this being the only bronze 17 that i pick up so if it's the first pair i'm going to pick up i would rather if able um, to get them, get the coolest colorway that I feel or looks the best. And this was the one that I wanted to go after first. After the shock drop, I was actually really surprised. I didn't get them on the shock drop. I missed missed out on them there. Um, but I was actually surprised that they did an actual initial release for them. It actually really surprised me that they released the next Friday, I believe it was, 
um, and I was able to get them on that release. But as I said, I wasn't even expecting to be able to get them, so I was very happy that I was able to grab a pair. So you can see here the Nike swoosh, which is backwards on the uh, side of the shoe here, and then you do have this really big air unit, um, and I've heard that it's very, very cushioned shoe, um, not much court feel from what I'm hearing thus far. Obviously, this is all just hearsay. I'm not giving you this information from what I've actually tested them, but as I said, it's just information that I've heard or read um, at this point. Um, but I do foresee these being very, very cushioned, and it's going to be a very comfortable feel, but I just don't know right now how I'm going to like it actually on the court. But I will say this, I've enjoyed pretty much every LeBron uh, model to actually play in since I have been, you know, really that I can remember actually. I won't even say testing because I really have only been writing performance reviews this year, but you know, I always was big into sneakers and actually playing in them. And what I remember performance wise, I've always loved playing in LeBron's. But going back to this actual pair, we'll take a look at the hang tag here, which I think is another really cool feature. Um, it says remove before launch on the back of the shoe. And you've got this like little hole on the pull tab here where it goes in there. It's actually on both shoes. And then on the back of it, you do have the LeBron logo. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other one here. Um, this one does say remove before launch as well, um, but it does have some specs or different things on the actual back. Um, it's basically Nike Air, Nike Air Max technology, nip posit, you know, just different features and things that it says on the back about the actual shoe. Um, taking a look at the insole here, you do have an orange insole, and it's got Nike. Uh, Nike Air and then some other branding and features and things like that in there. I don't even know if the camera's going to pick it up. Um, and then taking a look at the uh, traction pattern on here, um, I don't think that the the traction on LeBron's has never really been that big of an issue for me. They've always worked out pretty decently well. I don't foresee too big of a problem with these, but you never know until you get on court. I mean, that could be horrible, but at the same time, I think that these are going to overall be pretty decent. The thing that I'm most worried about is that actual cushion setup. I do like court feel, but I will say this, like the LeBron um, 16, for example, um, it had, you know, every LeBron pretty much has a lot of cushion. So uh, I basically have, as I said before, like playing in everyone. So I don't think that this is gonna be too big of an issue. I just feel like that this is gonna be such a big air unit. I believe this is the now the largest um, air unit on any LeBron sneaker. I know the eight was before this, so it's up in the air. I'm not really sure uh, what the actual tech specs are between the two, which one has the bigger one, but I'm thinking that I heard somewhere that this actually is the largest air unit now on any LeBron signature shoe or model. Um, so overall, that's my basic opinion or thoughts on the LeBron 17, um, getting them out of the box. And I just think that overall, as I said, I'm really glad to have it in my collection as an actual collector's item for a shoe. But at the same time, I can't wait to get on the court and play, play in these and try them out performance-wise. But thanks again, guys, for tuning in today. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all your guys' support. I hope you've enjoyed these videos here recently um, with the J Jordan 34s. I did the Jordan one low shatter backboard and obviously now these LeBron 17s. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we will be doing a KD12 a 90s kid colorway um, review um, or overview uh, later this week. So I will get that video out to you guys very, very soon. But thanks again guys for all your support. I really do appreciate it. And we'll be back very, very soon with some more sneakers. Peace.